Thanks for staying with us at STL Live. I'm Sarah Bernard, and my guest is Dr. Thomas Zink, the city of St. Louis's senior medical advisor. Um, so we've been talking about um, the mosquito population and how we can just keep it down in our yards, around our homes, in our neighborhoods. But let's talk about the Zika virus. So it started in South America, Central America a few years ago. It became, I mean, it didn't start then, but that's when we started hearing about it a mm. lot. And now we're finding it all the way up here in the Midwest. So how has that progressed? Well, any virus in the, in the world can travel to anywhere else in the world with our transportation systems within less than 24 hours. Mm. So the migration of humans brings about the same. A mosquito can catch a ride on an airplane just as easy as we can. Yeah. And in cargo ships and so on. And as a matter of fact, that's really how yellow fever got started way up in the in the Memphis and in St. Louis because it hitched a ride on some of the river boats. So travel and um, migratory patterns of travel can really uh, turn us upside down when it comes to monitoring diseases. Yeah, so the Zika virus, tell us a little bit about what, what that is. What is the virus? Are there symptoms that we need to be looking for? Sure. How do we, um... It's benign. It's a relatively benign disease, actually, um, infection, actually. It, it, it can cause a number of symptoms that you might normally, uh, um, uh, I would say, give credit to inflammation. You know, mm -hmm. It can at times cause problems with red eyes, so you know, weeping eyes, conjunctivitis. Uh, makes you feel feverish, sluggish, tired, sickly, um, fee and, and really, uh, for the most part, there could be some rash that occurs too, but for the most part, it's a self-limiting disease. It, it doesn't really put people in, in any harm's way for the most. So people may have it not really even realize. Not pay attention to mm -hmm. it, and that's why usually um, we try to find out if someone has traveled recently when they come in with these sorts of general flu-like symptoms. Okay. okay. And if they've traveled abroad or to an area where we know that we have the, the predominance of the mosquito that carries the virus, and even some cases of, of this, such as in South America, especially during the time frame around the Olympics, people were worried that there were going to be a lot of uh, issues. Thankfully, it had already settled down in terms of an environment that that was um, advantageous for the for the mosquitoes back in the Olympic time frame, mm -hmm. but you still have to worry about if you are infectious, if you do have the virus uh, of transmitting it, just like any virus can mm -hmm. through close contact, sexual contact, blood um, sharing, blood um, in terms of donations and so forth. So, and the big danger is um, to unborn babies. Is that correct? Yeah, I guess that, that would be the best way to put it. It, it, it. it does transfer across the placenta from mom to baby. Mm -hmm. And that can, and, and like a lot of the viruses that we've all tried to use vaccines against, they can cause um, malformation in babies or birth defects. And so we want to try to keep mom as healthy as possible throughout those early stages during the development of the babe so that there isn't... Um, these sorts of diseases that can um, affect them and with congenital malformations. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, and so is it something that um, we've seen more of in St. Louis over the past couple of years, or do you, do you track the actual disease manifestation? We have a real robust surveillance group, mm -hmm. a bunch of excellently trained epidemiologists that follow how things are going in the city and double checking with each of the emergency rooms. We have systems. All that, that we follow and diseases we follow weekly on their frequency and we compare those to historical norms. Mm -hmm. So yes, we do keep a close track. It is not something that we've seen a big deal here. We, and when we do have a su suspected case, we, are, we follow it very closely and we try to identify whether it was inherent to the community or it was from a person who's traveled and brought it within to the community because of their travel. Yeah. And in those cases, we keep very close uh, touch on those patients, make sure that they heal and that they're doing well, but that they don't get infected, uh, they don't pass the infection on either by not having screens up in terms of barriers to protect themselves from getting a mosquito in there and then the mosquito coming out to the community and, um, and other things like that that we pay attention to. Okay, very yeah. good. All right, well, we're going to take a break right now, Dr. Okay. Zink, but thank you so much for sharing with us. Make sure uh, the four Ds to, for prevention of, uh, of mosquito-borne viruses. There's more STL Live after this. Stay with us.